Hey guys, this is Hydro from Nitrates, and in this video, I'm going to be going over a weekly analysis, weekly overview, and then take a look at the big cap tech stocks, and then take a look at the best stocks setting up for the upcoming week. So, as usual, we'll start off looking at the indices. So, we'll take a look at SPY first. So, this is the weekly chart. So, two major uptrends, right? So this is the first trend that has started in 2023, and then this is another. A steeper trend that has started recently and uh, so far the SPY has been holding the steeper trend so this is perfectly normal action although we pulled back in pretty hard last week so although we pulled back in pretty hard the trend is still holding so that's fine and it would be completely normal to consolidate tighten up and then see that 453 breakout uh, that 453 level is definitely a very significant level rejected here once rejected twice three times and now reject it again, tried to break out last last week and then this week it failed. Um, but yeah, the 444 uh, is a very important support level. If that breaks, then we could see a bigger pullback to this uh, other uptrend line. But overall, still healthy action as that uptrend line is still holding. So there's a good chance that we could also see a pullback to 442 just to fill that gap. Um, yeah, I think there's a very good chance of that happening, and then we could potentially bounce from there. But if we don't bounce from there, then we could see a bigger pullback to this trend line. So although it's looking bearish right now, it is short-term bearish, but still, we are definitely still in a very strong uptrend, right? So keep that in uh, context, right? So we're short-term bearish, but long-term bullish still, since the uptrend lines are still holding. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for SPY. Now we'll take a look at QQQ. So QQQ is a little bit weaker because it's already breaking this lower, or this uh, more recent uptrend line. But it makes sense why that's happening because QQQ is just super extended, right? Really strong year so far. So a bigger pullback would make sense. And uh, yeah, it really hasn't had much rest. The last big pullback was in March. So since then, it hasn't had a really, it had had a, yeah, it really had no really big pullback since then. So this is perfectly normal action. We had a really strong rally. Now we're pulling back, and some consolidation would be good here. And the key support level would be that 370. So we want to make sure that level holds. If that level does not hold, then we could see a bigger pullback. Um, but yeah, also gap up or gap here to fill at 368. So there's a very good chance that it could fill that gap and then bounce, but if it fails to bounce from there, then we could see a bigger pullback to this uh, trend line. But still overall, bullish action because this is the major uptrend line, and as long as that holds, then we are still technically in an uptrend, even though short term we are looking a little bit bearish. And potentially, we could see a couple months of consolidation and just tighten up and stay in that range from 382 to 370. But overall, still bullish action, but short term bearish right now. Now we'll take a look at some of the individual big cap tech stocks. Start off with Apple. Apple had earnings last week, and it dropped pretty, pretty hard, right? Uh, take a look at the weekly chart. So the 181 level is a key support level. So if we're gonna bounce, that would be where we should bounce. But Apple did break this up. Uh, uptrend and now yeah now it's falling pretty pretty hard right take a look at the daily chart really a good drop on friday from earnings but yeah we'll see what apple can do if apple fails to bounce at 181 then next support level would be around that 172 level and if that fails to hold to then next support level would be at the 156 level but um, yeah, I think that 172 level will hold for sure if we do break that 181 level Fill that gap and then bounce potentially but right now definitely short-term bearish on Apple it Needs a lot of rest because it had such a powerful rally this entire year, right? So some rest and some pullback would be good here um, But yeah, that's pretty much it for Apple. Take a look at AMD So AMD also had earnings this week. It actually gapped up on earnings, I think. Or it didn't gap up, but it had it opened higher on earnings and then closed below. But now it's bouncing back again. So on the daily chart, that 117 level 
has a clear resistance level. It's actually starting to form a little flag here. Let me try to flag this out. So very clear resistance level here, right? Every time you touch that resistance, it's rejected. Uh, it, it actually tried to break on Friday as well, but close below. So I think potentially Andy's going to tighten up here, tighten up here, consolidate more, and then make a big breakout in either direction. But yeah, for now, AMD is fine. It's just uh, It's probably just going to consolidate for a couple more days, and then you could see a potentially big breakout in, uh, in either direction. But yeah, the 120-ish level is a key resistance level, and the 106, 107 is a key support level. Next up, we'll take a look at Amazon. Amazon actually gapped up on earnings um, for like the weekly chart. So Amazon looks pretty good here. It's been, it had a really nice rally, but it was a slow and controlled rally, so that's good action. Never got too extended, and then it consolidated, consolidated for a couple weeks here, and now it finally broke that 137 level, and it's looking pretty good here, right? Next uh, resistance level is around that 147 level, and I think uh, we could potentially see that next week if we get a continuation, but since the market's bullish, or I mean, since the market is very short term right now, I think uh, we'll probably see Amazon just drop around for a, a little bit. But yeah, overall, had good earnings, really strong gap up, but close, close up pretty weak because of the market uh, conditions. Um, but yeah, we'll see if that 136 level becomes a support level and it bounces off that. But overall, good action on uh, Amazon. Next up, we'll take a look at Google, go to the weekly chart. So Google had a really nice breakout last last week, and now it's consolidating here. So this is perfectly healthy action. As long as the 127 level holds, this is perfectly healthy action for Google. And the next target would be that 136 level. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Google. Uh, it's holding up pretty well. Next up, Meta. Meta also has been holding up incredibly well. Um, really, really, really strong rally this entire year. Um, and now it's just consolidating. It's been consolidating for the past four weeks and some more consolidation would be good But uh, yeah, next target for meta would be that 350 level um, But yeah, I would really like to see more consolidation because this one just had an insanely powerful rally So more consolidation would be good here uh, Next up Microsoft So Microsoft had a pretty ugly reversal a couple weeks ago tried to break out and then failed so that 345 level is definitely a key resistance level. And now it's starting to break down a little bit harder. Uh, support level is around that 324 level. So good chance we're going to test that this week or this upcoming week. And we'll see if we can bounce off that. If we don't bounce off that, we could see a much bigger pullback all the way down to 309. But overall, good action. Um, a short term bearish. Also, look at that distribution volume the last three weeks, right? That's definitely not a good sign. Uh, next up, Netflix. So Netflix has been consolidating for quite some time now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. Been stuck in between that 450 and 420 range. So very simple case for Netflix, right? If it breaks that 450 level, then be bullish on it. If it breaks that 420 support level, then be bearish on it. But overall, Good action on Netflix is just consolidating after a nice move up. Um, next up, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA had really, NVIDIA has been extremely strong this entire year. Let me remove this. Now, um, it gapped up. I think this was the, let me go to the daily chart. So it's starting to form a longer bull flag here. Right, it's gapped up very strong. That's been, um, it's been grinding up higher this uh since then. Right after that earnings gap up, it's been grinding higher, and higher, and now it's making a longer bull flag here. And earnings are gonna come up soon. I think uh, eight twenty three, so a couple more weeks. But yeah, we'll see if um, <clears throat> Nvidia can continue just consolidate, continue to consolidate and form that bull flag. But on the weekly chart. Yeah, it's just forming a bull flag here again. 
it's just consolidating four weeks of consolidation so far perfectly uh, healthy action um, we want to see it get tighter and tighter potentially like the re these three weeks of consolidation this was a very clean setup right it was, it was consolidating very tightly and then it had that clear 430 breakout level here it's doing things say it's consolidating uh, just like before but it's not tight right it's wide and loose so you want to see more tight action for good risk reward setups but overall uh, pretty good action and you want to see that 470 level breakout for the next leg up um, next up we'll take a look at tesla so tesla has been acting bearish ever since earnings um yeah, not a great earnings report and it tried to bounce but failed uh, so short-term downtrend actually starting to form here for the last uh, four weeks so if we can break that uh, trend line then very good chance that we could see a rally back up to 284 but right now it's definitely a little bit bearish and it could potentially see a uh, move back to 247 which is a key support level but overall not too bearish on tesla it had a very nice run now it's consolidating here uh, potentially just needs a few more weeks of consolidation and tighten up and, the, and it can potentially break out again but yeah overall not too bad on Tesla or not too bad action on Tesla either now uh, we'll take a look at how growth stocks are doing so we'll take a look at ARKK go to the daily chart so ARKK had a very nice breakout from the 45 level really nice rally and now it got extended, pulled back in, tried to rally again, and now pulled back in pretty hard, right? It's been acting very volatile recently, and that 45 level is a key support level, so we should bounce off there. But if we don't, then very good chance that we could go back into this chop, right? Um, but yeah, that 45 level was very important, and we need to bounce off there. Otherwise, we could yeah, just go back into consolidation mode. But um, taking a look at the weekly chart, Um, yeah, we were forming a nice consolidation pattern here, three weeks, and then this week we dumped pretty hard. So yeah, like I said, again, that 45 level is very important. If we don't bounce off it, we can go back into this range. Um, but if we do bounce off it, and we get back through that 50 level, next uh, resistance level will be 52. All right, now we'll take a look at some of the stocks that have been acting well, um, and potentially get set up for next week. So GDRX had a really strong uh, gap up here, really strong volume, and now it's starting to form a, or now it has a very clear resistance level at that 9.25 level. And we want to see a few more days of consolidation and see if it forms some sort of flag for us to take a trade off. But right now it's too wide, right? We want to see it tighten up more and then uh, yeah, just consolidate for a few more days and then potentially can make a big breakout. Taking a look at the weekly chart, this has a lot of upside potential because uh, yeah, it used to be like $50 before, so this one could be a big winner for sure. Uh, next up, we'll take a look at SYM. So this one had a really nice uh, gap up in earnings, super strong volume, and uh, it's been consolidating nicely. So that 60 level is very key. We can break that level it would be a bullish confirmation and that would be a buy signal there and right now it's forming a little bull flag here um friday wasn't great close pretty weak um but yeah we'll see if we can form a bull flag until day for a couple more days and if it breaks that trend line or if it breaks that 60 level that would definitely be a buy signal but this stock has been acting really well all year long look at that trend right it's been it went from Eleven dollars to sixty-four dollars. So this is a very, very strong stock this year, and uh, could potentially uh, look for another leg up here. So hopefully, consolidate for a couple more days, break that trend line, break sixty, and that'd be a very easy buy signal. Another stock to look at is VRT. This one had a very strong gap up on earnings. It actually had two strong gap ups on earnings. This was the first one last quarter and ever since then it's just been grinding higher and higher again we're doing the same thing gapping up and uh, we took out the gap up highs on friday very strong action friday was your 
Friday was a bearish day, but the stock continued to move higher. So this is very bullish action. Take a look at the weekly chart. This one's making a huge uh, breakout on the weekly. It used to have a very significant resistance level of 28, and now completely uh, broke out of that level, right? So this is this definitely has a lot of potential, and this is going into new all-time highs territory. So definitely um, a lot of room to the upside here. But yeah, this one's acting great, and I want to see it consolidate more, and form form some sort of flag. Definitely don't buy it here because it's getting extended. You want to see, you want to wait for some sort of consolidation, wait for some sort of flag, and then this could potentially be a good setup to buy. And last but not least, we'll take a look at expert. I want to take a look at LI actually. LI has been extremely, extremely strong, and China overall has been really has been doing really well recently. And LI is one of definitely one of the leaders uh, for EV in China. Neo is also strong, but look at where Neo is compared to like previous all-time highs compared to uh, LI. Right, LI is back to all-time highs pretty much. So this one's definitely a lot stronger, and this is the one that you want to be paying attention to. Um, but yeah, Ally has been acting very strong, and it's a very strong um, EV name in general. Another strong uh, China name is EH. This one has been acting really, really well. Had a nice breakout here, right? This was the first breakout, and then made a tried to form flag here, and then failed, and then it formed another flag here, and then broke out, and now it's forming another flag here. So this one is yeah, this one trades really well forms nice flags but yeah if we can break that trend line then that could be another buy signal and this one also has a lot of potential because it's pretty beaten down it used to be it had a really nice run before in 2021 so this one has a lot of potential right and this one potentially is just getting started so definitely want to keep your eye on it but yeah li is definitely the strongest chinese stock i've seen so far and yeah this one's ready to uh, make new all-time highs but this one's also very hard to trade because uh, it doesn't really hasn't really offered too many opportunities this year. It's just been slowly grinding higher and higher. But there have been small bull flag trades to take. Uh, like this, this one's probably the nicest one. If we, and then there's another one over here. But yeah, this one does trade a little bit funky. But if you take a look at the weekly chart, very clear action that this one's insanely strong. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this weekly video. Thank you guys for tuning in.